So, as the good developers we are, our proof of concept has been approved by our manager. Now we want to take what we created and turn it into a real product. As you may have noticed in the previous module, the way we manage change in our application can be improved. And since everything is on our dev environment, this could be a problem if we forget our laptop in a taxi, for example. Since we want to move our application to something more collaborative, our goal is to have something that not only can keep our source code replicated and secure, but will also allow multiple developers working on the same project at the same time without breaking things made by others. It is almost impossible to have this conversation without talking about continuous integration. CI is a best practice for software development and is guided by a set of key principles. Among them, there are revision control, build automation, and automated testing. Let's talk about revision control and source code in this training. By definition, source control is the practice of tracking and managing changes to code. A source control management system provides not only a history of code development, but also allows you to track changes, see revision histories, revert to previous versions, and many other features. It also allows you to collaborate on code with your team, isolate your work until it's ready, and quickly troubleshoot issues by identifying who made changes and what the changes were. There are plenty of source control systems, like SVN, CVS, TFS, VSS, and you may already be familiar with Git, one of the most popular source control systems nowadays. The good news is that you can collaborate on projects across your team in a secure manner using the cloud. AWS has a service called CodeCommit, which has a generous free tier allotment, and you can review the AWS free tier documentation available in this course notes. CodeCommit is a managed source control system that can host private Git repositories and work with all Git-based tools. Because it runs in the AWS cloud, you no longer have to worry about hosting, scaling, and maintaining your source code control infrastructure. CodeCommit uses encryption by default and is integrated with AWS Identity Access Management, or IAM for short. For example, you can allow some developers to push code to the repository and have other users that can only read it. There are lots of examples about CodeCommit permissions in the AWS documentation. See this week's course note for links. The easiest way to set up Git to work with your code commit is to create an IAM user, grant code commit API permissions for it, and add Git credentials. With that configuration set, you can now use the username and password with Git clients. Let me quickly show you how you can do this in the AWS Management Console. To find code commit in the AWS Management Console, you just type code commit here and click in the service. This is the main screen of CodeCommit Management Console. To create a new repository, you can click on the blue button called Get Started. You need to specify a repository name. In this case, it's going to be Flask App. When we, when we click in the blue button Create Repository, you can configure email notifications, which we are going to skip for now. Now the repository is created, and this is the clone URL for the repository. Let's click in this button here, copy it, and note it somewhere. Once the repository is created, we can navigate through the Web Management Console to take a look into it. Actually, this is an empty repository because I just created it. But from the Web Management Console, I can upload or create new files. When I scroll down, I need to insert my name and my email. And actually, the file name. If I click in the blue button commit file, it will do a git push for me. Now I have a single file in my repository, the readme.markdown. If I click here on the sidebar on commits, I can see what were the commits made on that repository. I can see what are the branches, and actually, we just have the branch master. I can see tags, 
and I can edit settings from my code commit repository. Now let's grant permissions to my IAM user to be able to interact programmatically with this code commit repository using Git credentials. If you go on the IAM console, you can click here on the sidebar to see the users you have. And I have a user called Raphael. If I click here in security credentials, I will have the opportunity of scrolling all to the bottom and generating an HTTPS Git credentials to use with code commit. So let's do it. I click in generate, and the console will generate me a username and a password, which I will also note. The username and the password. Now that I have the git clone URL, the username and the password, let's see how to interact with that repository programmatically using the CLI. Most developers use CLI to interact with code repositories. So let me go into my Cloud9 instance, which I already have open here in my console. I'm logged inside my instance in the directory slash home slash EC2 user. If I list the contents in this directory, I can see that I have something called environment. This is actually the environment of Cloud9. If I go into this folder and list the contents, we can see that we have another folder called source code on my machine. If we enter into that folder and list the contents, we see that actually this is the source code that we want to commit to code commit to have all of the collaborative editing. Let's go back one level and clone the Git repository. We can do that by doing git clone and the repository URL. Git now will ask me for a username and a password, and I can use the git credentials that I have here. This is my username, and this is my password. The git client is now cloning the repository into my machine. Now, I'm going to copy everything that I have in the folder source code on my machine to the Flask app, which is the folder created by the previous command. If I log into the folder Flask app and list the contents, I actually can see the same files that I had in the folder source code on my machine. If we do the command git status, we can see that we have some files that were not committed to git to code commit yet. Then we can add all of these files as part of our initial release by doing the command git add dot. Now if we do git commit dash m initial commit, we are committing all of these files identified by the string initial commit. Now to push these changes to our code commit repository, we just do git push. Then we have to specify the username again and the password. Now the changes have been committed to our code commit repository. If we go back in the web management console and click here in code and refresh the screen, we can see that we had committed our source code into the code commit repository. Now it's your turn to use code commit. Next, we will have an introduction on the code commit exercise.